hope this video finds you well. This particular video in the lecture series of behavioral finance is about expected utility theory and I am Shrutika, assistant professor at SNSB Spine and Experiential Business Program. So the expected utility theory is a very important concept in behavioral finance. I would say rather this is the theory around which all other behavioral finance concepts are constructed or this was the theory that acted as a breakthrough in the investment sector. This was the theory that created a sense for studying the psychological aspects as well before making investment decisions. So till the expected utility theory came into play, investment decisions was all about market analysis. It was all about just understanding the market and it's not about understanding human psychology. So it is this particular theory that brought in the importance of understanding utility as a parameter in addition to the market elements. So let's delve deep into the theory and understand the nuances. So expected utility theory is a framework for understanding how people make decisions and when the outcomes are uncertain. So when I'm not very sure of what is happening around me, when I'm not very sure how something is going to benefit me, I would still take a decision. Just out of an assumption that I'll be benefited out of that particular service or a product. So that expectation that I build up on a product, that expectation that somebody builds up over a product or a service is called the expected utility. So this particular theory discusses about how expected utility affects investment decision making. So this theory was developed by John Von Neumann and Oscar Morgan Stern in their work on game theory. This theory helps us explain why people make certain choices by weighing potential outcomes based on their probabilities and the utility derived from them. So, as I told before, in this theory, the authors have made an attempt to explain how choices are made despite the consequences being uncertain. How choices are made just out of what somebody is expecting something to turn out to be. So, it's purely based on expectations, it's purely based on probabilities, but the decisions have a significant impact on investments. So, utility, according to this theory, refers to the satisfaction or value that an individual derives from an outcome. So, what value I attach to something? What value I attach to the pen that I have? What value that I, I attach to the investment that I make? What value I attach to the relationships I have in my life? So, that is what is utility. Utility, utility is how much satisfaction I get out of something or how much value I give to something. So, expected value is the sum of all the possible outcomes. So, I may expect a result out of something and an accumulation of all these results is called expected value. On the other hand, expected utility is the sum of utilities of all the possible outcomes. It is the conglomeration of how much I believe everything around me would be of benefit to me. Everything around me would satisfy my need. So, expected utility, expected value and utility are the three fundamental concepts around this theory. So, the expected utility theory goes around several assumptions, the first being completeness. The proponents of this theory, they strongly believe that every pair of options that are made available to somebody can be compared. One can act as a complement to the other. The, uh, the multiple options available can put together to form a unit. Second is transitivity goes by a simple math. If A is preferred to B and B is preferred to C, then we can easily conclude that A is preferred to C. So, putting it into a real-time example, if somebody prefers tea to coffee and coffee to milk, then it's very obvious that the person prefers tea to milk. Say, I like my mother more. But when it's a comparison between my mother and father, I like my father more. Then it obviously means I have a preference for my father over anybody else. So that is transitivity. Independence. Independence uh, is nothing but preferences between outcomes are independent of irrelevant alternatives. So the irrelevant alternatives that are present around me would not have an impact of how much I prefer something. So, the preferences and alternatives are not related. That is what this theory assumes. So, EUP 
leads to rational decision making. Expected utility theory assumes that individuals act in a rational manner such that they maximize the expected utility. They work in a manner that their probabilistic utility is attained to the maximum possible extent. Um, with respect to risk, risk preferences, uh, expected utility theory puts uh, people into three risk categories. Risk averse, risk neutral and risk seeking. Risk averse people prefer a certain outcome over a gamble with the same expected value. Like uh, if I'm not ready to take risk, if I'm a risk averse person, I would say I, I prefer something that I know, something that is there before my eyes than something that is not existing. So, I would not rely on probabilities more. But if I am a risk neutral person, depending on the situations, my preferences may vary. One time I may prefer an outcome and the other time I may prefer a gamble. On the other hand, a risk seeking person would obviously prefer a gamble over an outcome because they believe maybe I get the best out of the ga gamble than what is available here. So, how is EUT of application in real life? The expected utility theory helps in investment decision making helps in insurance planning, gambling and many more. So, with respect to investment decisions, investors can use the expected utility theory to decide between different financial assets balancing risk and return. They may like understand the concepts of risk and return. Uh, they may take major financial decisions based on the expected utility concept. Also, risk averse individuals buy insurance more in order that they avoid certain losses. So, expected utility theory can also be put into insurance decision making. Uh, people who are more into risk taking as uh, ascertained by expected utility theory would definitely be more into gambling and more into probability. So, these are some areas where the expected utility theory comes into application. There are several major criticisms to the EUT. The first being behavioral critics. Where people you know, the behavioral scientists, they believe that in addition to the EUT predictions, in addition to the expected utility, there are several other real-life decision-making parameters that come into existence like uh, laws aversion or framing effect or any other cognitive bias for that matter. It's not just about expected utility, but it's about a lot other concepts, a lot other uh, cognitive aspects as well. The allies paradox demonstrates that people's choices violate expected utility theory by showing inconsistent preferences. You know, at different situations, at different probabilities, my preferences differ. So, uh, an investor's preference for a particular uh, investment choice doesn't remain the same at all situations. So, the decision that I make is influenced by the probability they are, that I associate. And also by the situation that I lie in. Depending on the situation, depending upon the external and internal circumstances, the extent of probability also differs. Prospect theory, a direct alternate model to the expected utility theory. This theory accounts for how people actually perceive probabilities and outcomes. There are several practical implications of EUT, the first being financial planning. This helps individuals and institutions to manage risk and make better investment decisions. Uh, this particular theory explains why different people buy different levels of insurance. This theory can also be used to explain how the government can design policies in a way that the societal risks are met. So, in conclusion, the expected utility theory is a powerful tool for understanding decision making under uncertainty despite its limitations. The expected utility theory remains foundational in economic theory, guiding everything from personal finance to large scale economic policies. The expected utility theory is useful, incorporating behavioral insights and this theory can provide a fuller picture of decision making. So, I hope this video